starting a series, uh, a new series this month, five weeks, Faith, Faith That Endures, hence the endurance theme. Um, <clears throat> we're going to begin with a, a study in angels today, and then next week will be demons, and then I have three others uh, that are just equally as interesting. Each of these topics are theological in their, um, at their core, and so we're going to approach this from a, from a teachy, preachy a perspective for you today. That's why you have a handout. So all of you type A's, if you miss a blank, you'll be tortured the rest of your life. But that's okay. We'll give you the answers later if you miss one. We're going to start with angelology, which is a which is a uh, discipline of theology. Each of these, by the way, are, are like. They're full semester courses um, that I took or that you do take in, in uh, seminary and so forth. So we're going we're gonna to cover it in the, next, in the next 40 minutes or so. So we'll give you some highlights. Uh, angels is a big deal. Angels are a big deal. Um, there are 24 million Google searches for angels every month. That's a lot. People want to know a lot about angels. Uh, but for those of you that are prepared, I'd like you to just close your eyes for a second, join me, and I'd like you just to imagine what an angel looks like, all right? In your mind's eye, see an angel. Okay. Did you see a woman in white with a halo? Something like that? Where did you see those chubby little kids? You know, these guys. A children's choir, an angel playing a harp. I don't know. What do they look like? What do they do? Where do they come from? What's their role? Well, uh, we're going to start right here in your handout. You're going to see, uh, first of all, the, of course, the word angel is in both the Old and New Testament. In Hebrew, it's pronounced malak, and in uh, Greek, it's, it's pronounced angelos, where we get the word, the, uh, the Greek name angelo, and the Italian word, I mean, just the name angelo, or angela, for you ladies, means angel. And the root of that is somebody who is dispatched as a deputy, a messenger of God, so first of all, we don't pray to and we don't worship angels. And this is why there isn't a lot of talk about angels because we don't want to pay too much attention to angels. But angels are as much a reality as demons. And we're going to talk about the, the difference there uh, next week in more detail. But look at Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. Then the angel said to me, right, blessed are those who were invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he, he added, these, and the angel is talking now, these are the words of God. And at that, John the Revelator, I, this is in the book of Revelation, he says, at that I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, do not do it. So get the picture. John the Revelator's in heaven, the angel comes to him, starts talking to him, and, I mean, John's just blown away, and his, his gut reaction is to fall down and to worship. Now, this is in heaven, and John is bowing down to worship an angel. Are you getting the, are you getting the, the drift here again? So he says in verse 10, don't do that. Don't do it. In other words, I mean, put yourself... In this little scenario, here you are. Watch this. I'm the angel. I'm saying these things to John. John falls down and worships me, the angel, and I'm like, get up, get up, get up, get up. Don't, no, 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 no. Get up, get up, get up. Hurry up, hurry up. Don't be doing that up here. You're going to get me busted. We're going to have trouble. Do you understand how significant that is? We don't worship angels. We don't pray to them. All right. 
uh, they'll always direct any worship to God. And by the way, know this, you know, that it says in scripture that, that even the devil can masquerade as an angel of light. Do you know that all, all of the, and I'm already digressing, but all of the, all of the uh, major cults from Mormonism, Jehovah's Witness, um, uh, they, they, all come, they all come from the revelation of an angel to a person. You track them back. Islam, an angel came. See? So you've got to really, really be on your guard in this angelic realm, okay? All right, so the origins of angels, here we go. They're created by God. The origin of angels, first they are created by God, Psalm 148 and Colossians 115. And by the way, if you're watching on television or online, you want a copy of the handout today, just uh, drop us a text or a note and we'll, we'll mail you out a copy. Or we'll put it up on the Facebook page later. That'd be great. So there is a fixed unknown number of angels. There is a fixed unknown number of angels. We know this because a third of them eventually fell. So if there's a third that fell, we know that that there are more angels than there are demons. Um, Revelation chapter 12, verses four through seven, talks about the rebellion and that a third of the angels went with Satan and rebelled against God. So basic math class, if a third of the angels rebelled and they became demons, that leaves two-thirds angels. From the get-go, there are more angels than there are demons, two to one. We've got it, we've, we've got it, the fix is in, right? And there, by the way, there are, no, there are no more angels today than there were 2,000 years ago. When people die, it's a misnomer that they believe that, oh, that oh, Uncle Tom, Aunt Jerry, Aunt Jerry, Aunt Julie, uh, whatever, they died and now they're an angel. No, when you die, you don't become an angel, okay? So there's two distinct classifications of angels in Scripture. Those are those who followed Satan uh, and they're demons and those angels who followed God and they are the holy angels. So in angelology, there's a subdivision called demonology, and we're gonna talk about demons next week, all things demons next week. So here we go. <clears throat> angels were created to do one thing, and that was to worship God. In Revelation 7, 11, the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God. Angels are servants not called children like we are. They fell down on their faces. Revelation 4.11, you are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. They witnessed the resurrection of Jesus, 1 Timothy 3.16. Beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great, he appeared in a body, was vindicated by the Spirit, and was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, believed in the, in, uh, the world, and was taken up into glory. Angels minister to us who are saved, Hebrews 1.14. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? They are among us, Hebrews 13.2. Don't forget to entertain strangers. Don't forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some people, some of you, you don't even know it, but you actually entertained angels without knowing it. Wow. Wow. Think of that. And then I list a whole bunch of other um, places where uh, angels had appeared to minister. Number five, they protect and they, they, they protect the redeemed, Psalm 91. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, verse 10, then no harm will befall you, no disaster will come near you, near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. So do you have a guardian angel? Some would argue yes, some would argue no. We don't have a definitive answer. If you have 
you know, you're assigned angel number 3259724. We don't know that or not. But you have, we have angels watching over us. Make it, I mean, uh, uh, Cheryl and I pray together in the morning and the evening. And fairly regular in our evening devotion we do in the Lord, just surround our, surround our home, or surround our lives. Let your angels be there uh, ministering to us, you know? Those are legitimate prayers. They comfort us. Acts 27, 24. And the angel said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar and God who has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. They deliver, Acts 5, 19. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. What I think is really interesting, that God is all-powerful, right? And then he, he, just, he sends his angels, hey, go take care of that. Go, I mean, he could do it himself, but he sends his angels, go take care of that. Go, get, go bust them out of jail. Go take care of them here. Go take care of that. And do you know that there are angels at the bedside of those who die? At the moment of death, number eight, Luke 16, 22, the time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. I honestly believe that at the deathbed of every believer, there is an angel. However, the unsaved, the angels will judge them like they judge the Egyptians in Exodus 12. They judge the Sodomites in Genesis 19. They judged Herod in Acts 12. They'll judge the earth during the tribulation. They'll hold back the four winds of heaven. They pronounce the seven trumpet judgments in Revelation 8. They'll cast Satan and his, or they cast Satan and his angels out of heaven, Revelation 12. You thought God did that. God said, kick them out. Just like that. There wasn't some big war. God said to the angels, get him out of here. They announce the eternal hell waiting unbelievers. They predict the fall of Babylon. They pour out the seven vile judgments of Revelation 15.1. And they bind Satan in the bottomless pit, Revelation 20, verse 1. In Revelation 20, Satan is bound. Boy, that must have been tough. No, God said to the angels, go bind him up. Done. They rejoice, we know this. When uh, we make a choice to follow Jesus, angels are on our side. They love seeing us turn our hearts to God. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of all the angels of God over one sinner who repents. I put together a whole bunch of things uh, where uh, angels um, were involved in Jesus' life from, of course, predicting his birth. We know that from the Christmas story all the way through. And then in Hebrews 12, verse 22, but you have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect. Thousands upon thousands of angels. We don't know how many there are, it's, it, it, but it is a finite number but it's two-thirds more than there are demons. Number 12, in the last days, they actually preach the will of God and witness the wrath of God. In Revelation 14, then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, fear God and give him glory. Well, that's a great sermon. Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who has made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. A second angel followed and said, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. And then verse number nine, a third angel followed that, those two angels and said in a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on their forehead, or on their hand, he too will drink of the wine of the fury of God, 
He'll been poured out in full strength in the cup of his wrath. He'll be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of holy angels and of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and his image. For anyone who receives the mark of his name. You know that we do not marry, we do not have children in heaven. The Bible says that angels are like that. In heaven, men and women will be like angels. We do not marry or reproduce. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They'll be like the angels in heaven. Matthew 22, verse 30. Now here's something interesting, their appearance. When you see an angel on terra firma, on the ground, in the scripture, generally they have bright white clothing. They appear to people as people, like at the resurrection, when the, when the uh, ladies went to the tomb and there was an angel sitting on the rock. But in the spirit realm, when you see an angel, they have wings. Some have two wings. Some have six wings with lots of eyeballs all over them. So there's a couple differences. Let's go through this list. We have the angel of the Lord. This is a phrase that you'll see uh, in the Old Testament. And um, when you hear the phrase, the angel of the Lord, that is a technical term, Theophany, T-H-E-O, Theo, Phany, P-H-A-N-Y, Theophany. It's worth turning to. Deuteronomy, Joshua. Joshua 5. <clears throat> it's one of, my, one of my favorite. So the fall of Jericho, um, what verse do I have a starting on here? 13. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword. In his hand, Joshua went up to him and asked, hey, are you for us? Are you for, good question. That's a great question. And the angel says, the angel of the Lord says, neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, as commander of the of the army of the Lord, well, the army of the Lord is all of heaven, all the angels. You know the term, the host, heavenly host? You heard that phrase? Heavenly host? Heavenly, the word host means all of heaven's angels. That's what that means. Then Joshua, watch this. So, I, back up. Neither he replied, do you have the scripture or not? No? That's all right, I didn't, I didn't give it to you. Neither he replied, uh, the commander of the army of the Lord, but I have come now. So Joshua is talking to, to uh, the commander of heavenly host. So this is a theophany. This is, the, this is Jesus pre-incarnate in the Old Testament presenting himself to Joshua with a, with a sword. Pretty cool. And how, how do we know that for sure? Watch this. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what does my Lord have for his servant? So stop. Joshua falls down his face to worship. We know what happens if you do that in front of an angel. What is the angel supposed to do? Get up, get up. Not this, not this, not here. And then he says, Joshua says, what does, what does my Lord have to say? So, when in the Old Testament you see the angel of the Lord, that's a theophany. Now, categories besides the angel of the Lord, you have archangels. First of all, you have Michael. He is the warrior. You'll see that in Jude 9, Daniel 10. And then you have Gabriel who shows up all over the place when he's got something important to say. So that's why you often see or hear Gabriel blowing your trumpet, Gabriel blow your trumpet. Gabriel is the, is the enunciator, he's the mouthpiece, and then Michael comes and just says, we got this, we're the warriors, all right? So those are your archangels. You have two categories on your normal angels, and those are cherubs and seraphs. 
Let me tell you that the word cherub is a singular word. That's a definite article. That's a cherub. Plural in English would be cherubs. There's multiple cherubs. But the reason we say cherubim with the I-M ending is because that's, that's the plural ending in Hebrew. So when I say cherubim or seraphim and I put the I-M ending on, I'm saying there's multiple cherubs, multiple seraphs. I-M in Hebrew is S in English. Did I just confuse all of you? Good. So from now on, you know, it's like, oh, the cherubims. You don't say cherubims. It's cherubim, meaning multiple cherubs, okay? All right, here's the difference. Cherubs only have two wings, and they're the warriors. You'll see them at the Garden of Eden. Oh, yeah, they're the ones, by the way, that when Adam and Eve fell, God gave cherubs control of the entrance in and out of the Garden of Eden with flaming swords. So go back to Genesis, look it up, and you'll see that God put cherubs there, cherubim. And interesting, some people, many, think that Satan is an archangel. Satan was not an archangel. Satan was a cherub. In Ezekiel 28, 14 and 15, it says Satan is a cherub. But he was, you know, a warrior. Then you have seraphs. You have the seraph or seraphim. They have six wings. So cherubs have two wings. Seraphim always have six wings, and they're the worshipers. And we have time. We'll turn to Isaiah. You doing okay? Everybody doing all right? All right. Isaiah 6. You know this verse. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs. Each had six wings. With two of those wings, they covered their face. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying, calling one to another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth, is full of his glory. Man, what a job description that would be, huh? So we've got the angel of the Lord, we've got archangels, Gabriel, Michael, we've got cherubs and seraphs, and then we've got, I love this category, these are the four living creatures. And the way that I remember them is they spell the word loam, L-O-M-E. Lion, ox, man, eagle. You can write that down. But they're found in Revelation, Verse seven in Ezekiel chapter one, verse 10. In fact, I'll just go to Revelation. Chapter four. I gotta back up. It's just too good. And after that, I looked up, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and a voice I had first heard speaking to me sounded like a trumpet and said, come up here, and I'll show you what must soon take place. At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven, and someone sitting on it, and the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian. A rainbow resembling an emerald circled the throne. Surrounding the throne, there were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white, had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning rumblings and peals of thunder. If you have this idea that heaven is a quiet, sedate place, you need to put it in the category of the most bodacious, 
Bose sound system ever known to mankind. John gets called up into heaven. There's a throne. It's surrounded by an emerald rainbow. There are 24 elders seated around. Most will tell you they believe it's the 12 disciples and one representative from each of the 12 tribes. They have crowns. So you have the throne. You have the throne surrounded, overarched with an emerald, uh, with an emerald, with an emerald rainbow and 24 thrones. And the elders have these, these crowns on their head. They were dressed in white, crowns of gold on their head. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. And before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Look up Isaiah 11, two later if you want. Also before the throne was that which looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. The throne, the 24 elders, the rainbow, the thunder, the rumblings. And then from the the throne sat on this, this ocean of glass like crystal. And the 24 elders were seated in their thrones on this sea of crystal. And in the center around the throne were four living creatures and they were covered with eyes in front and back. So now we've got these four living creatures, the lion, the ox, the man, the eagle, and they are entirely covered with eyes. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third was the face of a man. And the fourth was a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings. They were covered with eyes all around, even under their wings. And day and night, day and night, they never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty who was and is and is to come. They never stopped saying that. Ever. It's like heaven's elevator music. There's constant hum in heaven. Holy, holy, holy. So John gets caught up in this. He goes, Whoa, what am I seeing? And whenever. Whenever the living creatures said that, gave glory and honor and thanks to him on the throne and all the lives and who lives forever and ever, what would happen is, here it is, verse 10, the 24 elders then would fall down before him who sits on the throne and they worshiped him who lives forever and ever. And they throw their crowns down before him and say, you are worthy, O Lord God, to receive glory and honor and power. So it's like some sort of crazy heavenly rave. The four living creatures, two wings, they cover their eyes, two wings, they cover their feet. With two wings they fly, covered in eyes, and they just start, they start it all. The the thunder is rumbling, and they just simply say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. At that, the the 24 elders get up, they take off their crowns, and they throw them at the foot of the throne. Can you just see that? Crowns are not for you, crowns are for him. Crown him with many crowns. The lamb upon his throne. Any crown you get here, the 24 elders, 
in the presence of God, take your crown off. I can just, I don't know, I, in my imagination, I hear the sound of a, of, a, of a metal crown tumbling on a crystal sea and landing at the foot of the throne. And then all the elders fall on their face. And while the angels are saying, holy, 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 the 24 are saying, you are worthy, O Lord God, to receive all glory, all honor, all power. You created all things, and by your will, they were created and have their being. I like those four living creatures. So we have a couple take-homes for you today. Number one, just be informed. They're spirit beings who are God's messengers and warriors. <clears throat> they do his bidding. They're created by God and for God. And I think it's a good idea for you to be alert because you could actually entertain an angel on the way home from church today and not even know it. Be aware. <laughs> Number three, be comforted in that there is a heavenly host. That is, heaven's army is there at God's disposal for you. Lexi sang it. I made myself a note during worship. It may look like you're surrounded. It may look like you're surrounded. Your home, your health, your finances, your job, persecution, people up on your business, people in your business, all kinds of craziness going on in your life. Second Kings 6. Then the servant of the man, servant of the man of God got up and he went out early the next morning and an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, prophet said. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And so Elisha prayed, Oh, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. And then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked. And he saw the hills full of the horses and the chariots of fire all around Elisha. It may look like you're surrounded. But God is with you, mighty warrior. I've had two quite memorable encounters with angels. First was I was leading a worship service at the church down on Carpenter and Klein over 20 years ago. And during worship, the top, I'm telling you what I saw, so you call me crazy, whatever you want, I don't care. The top of the room came off. There was no ceiling anymore in the auditorium. And what I saw was, it looked like, you know how you sit on the edge of a swimming pool and your legs are in the, in the pool? All I saw was, I'm gonna guess, 25 or 30 sets of angel legs all the way around, all the, way around the auditorium. I didn't see really above their knee or mid-thigh, I like, There's a heavenly host, and there's a great cloud of witnesses. What we've lost in America and in the Western culture in general is, this is a little bit of an editorial, is the ability, not the ability, but the willingness to entertain the idea that there is more than what you can touch. That impacted me greatly. My daughter uh, is the, fo the focal point of, of the second and the most stunning, more so than that time, 
I would pray regularly for uh, Hannah. And often I would get up in the middle of the night and I would just stand outside of her door in our home and pray for her. And one night, I was prompted to open the door and, and look inside and pray. And when I opened the door, it's like I opened the door into a snow globe of gold that was on fire. So it was a snow globe of all these little pieces of fire, golden fire. And standing at the end of her bed was an angel, all in white. And he looked at me and he says, I've got this. <laughs> These are not the emotions of a person that's making this up to make you feel good. I've dedicated my life to Jesus. I've dedicated my life to knowing him and helping other people to know him. And I don't always do it perfectly. <laughs> but we have help. The Holy Spirit is alive and well. He came at the resurrection for you and for me. And God has given us great authority. We are not alone. Any more than Daniel is in the, in the, in the lion's den, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace. You are not alone. And if you would entertain the idea that there is something more in this world than the things that you can touch, you are on the cusp of understanding how powerful the presence of the Lord can be in your life. Don't give up. You are not alone. There are more who are for you than are against you. Why don't you stand with me this morning? Well, that was a lot more emotional than I thought it was going to be today. <laughs> if you missed a blank, I actually created an answer key for you type A folks. If you can come, check that out later. I don't call on the angels of the Lord. I don't talk to the angels of the Lord. They are there to do the Lord's bidding. They are heaven's army. That the Lord will dispatch to be with you in difficult times. You don't know if you're gonna have enough money to make the month or your kid's going crazy or your marriage is on the rocks or you're just trying to figure out life. God loves you. He really, really does. And he's for you. So I'm going to pray that God would open our eyes in the spirit realm. Especially, you know, there's a lot going on in the world, especially this coming week. The election in Georgia on the 5th, all that's going to happen in Congress on the 6th. And if you're unaware of any of that, don't worry. Don't worry. Because because regardless of the outcome, I know who's on the throne, right? So, so we, we, we don't trust in chariots. We don't trust in horses. That's what, the psalmist, the, that's what the psalmist said. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we will trust in the name of the Lord. Do your part. Stand up. Be strong. Have a voice. Well, all my friends think that abortion is okay. It's not okay. Say it's not okay. And if they unfriend you because you stand for saving babies' lives, then they don't need to be your friend. Well, I might hurt somebody's feelings or they're going to unfriend me or I might lose my job. Or Who signs your paycheck? God signs your paycheck. 
Right is right, regardless. Wrong is never right. There is never the right way to do a wrong thing.